we have with us Shri Gidhi Swaini, Secretary to the Government of India, Ministry of MLA, and Shri Madhav Lalini, former Secretary to the Government of India, MSME, and former Chief Secretary, JNP State. I also extend my warm welcome to Shri Sandeep Kumar Naikji, Director General National Productivity Council, all the brokers, or to my colleagues and participants from various other organizations to take out their valuable time for making this uh, fruitful session. I welcome everybody to this lecture on new frontiers for MSME in the budget year 23-24, organized under the NPC lecture series. Before we move ahead with the lecture on the topic for the day, I would like to give a brief presentation about National Productivity Council. After the independence, Government of India intended to increase productivity consciousness in the country. In 1957, Government of India appointed a committee on productivity under the chairmanship of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. It visited Japan to study the constitution, administration, and working of the Productivity Center of Japan. On the basis of recommendations of the committee, the National Productivity Council was established in the year 1958. NPC is registered as an independent autonomous body under the Society's Registration Act 1986. NPC promotes productivity across sectors for a social economically stronger India. Honorable uh, Minister of Commerce and Industry is the President of Governing Council. NPC's governing body is chaired by the Secretary DIG. Director General NPC is appointed by the Governor. Go to the next question. Secretary has some other NPC. Yes. Uh, this is uh, our area of expertise of uh, National Productivity Company. Yes. Oh. Next item. Yes. Sorry. Yes. So, may I uh, now invite uh, Sri uh, Sandeep Nayak, the Director General, National Productivity Council, for felicitation of guest speakers. Uh, by presenting them uh, subcommittees. I request TGNPC to welcome Sri A.B. Swainley, Secretary, by presenting the I again request TGNPC uh, to welcome Sri Martin Martin as we move on to the next uh, section of today's uh, program, uh, I would uh, now uh, like to introduce our uh, president of the session. Shri Madhav Balji, who is former secretary to the Government of India, Ministry of MSME, and for our former Chief Secretary, JNT State, he joined IS in the year 1977 with JNT Padder. During his illustrious career, he has served in many districts of JNT, Sanipuch, and Kalka. He has contributed to various domains during his service tenure, uh, like agriculture cooperation, subdivision administration, personal management, institutional finance, economic affairs, industries sales tax, labor and employment, home, public works, education, HRD, urban development, power energy and road transport, environment and forest general administration, and as small scale industries. Uh, I now invite uh, Sir Shri Madhav Lalaji, former secretary sir, to, uh, for setting the context of the following features. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm grateful to Mr. Nayar for inviting me over here. Uh, and extend a hearty welcome to Mr. Bilbert Swain, who is uh, heading the MSME sector for the country. Uh, the context, I think, is embedded in the topic uh, which is uh, before us that 
what is there in the budget for the MSMEs. And uh, I think uh, the entire gathering over here knows that the MSMB sector is very important in more than one respect in terms of uh, the the employment it generates, the largest employer after agriculture, in terms of its share and contribution in the economy, the GDP, the exports, and so on and so forth. But among all, I think that the MSME's importance lies in the fact that MSMEs are spread across the country. So it is one sector which uh, is important for the economy. But it is also a kind of, uh, you know, an interface with the society and uh, the life at the grassroots level. So, in that sense, uh, I have always considered MSME as a kind of uh, socio-economic sector rather than a pure economic sector. Uh, a big part of the sector is uh, informal, which has its own problems, but uh, that is how it is. And uh, that is one of the challenges which is remained with the policy makers, both at the center and in the states. We'd like to hear from the secretary. I have been, not a bit, but very much dated, uh, having uh, left the Ministry of MSME in 2015. So I'm myself keen to listen to the current secretary uh, and in the process benefit from her learning as to what is happening. He's also in a hurry. He's a busy person. Uh, he has to be. So I would not stand in the way of uh, what he has to place before all of us. And uh, I would like to conclude over here and uh, when the proceedings uh, go on, and, uh, I think the secretary will tell us more. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. My respected senior in the ministry, sir. Sir, I think we are DC and uh, your secretary, and I think probably the longest tenure in. Uh, I, I, I love that because we think we and uh, almost every possible discussion in the ministry. So I can uh, be great uh, privilege to report to you, sir, that you know, very great. and uh, people uh, remember you very fondly of your tenure uh, in our ministry, both as we see and also as secretary. So, science is a great pleasure to share the stage with you. Uh, it is a great pleasure to. Several stages. It's not just my bachelor is like a brother for us that we have known each other from our college days. So, uh, it's a relationship which really holds me in service. It's a different kind of a relationship which we have. So, my <coughs> thanks to Dr. Sandeep Nai for inviting me here. So, I'm, I'm quite a deep on this. The mandate given is rather than you know, the new doctors in the industry, it does it quite it's a very, very specific topic. Just a little bit of the data part of it. I mean, the GDP contribution of this sector is 27%. Uh, if we compare it to it, some of the very, very advanced economies, actually, we had a competitive. So this basically means it's, it's a very high percentage of the budget. Uh, it's a budget, but there is clearly quite a bit of it. It's quite a bit of scope to go in on much budget. 36% is to the manufacturing output in 2021. And it's the second largest employer. If we go by slightly older data, even up to 2011 census, the highest employment is provided by agriculture in this country, 26.31%. At 11 crore, this is the second largest sector in employment. But I'll also give you certain data regarding the registration process, which is registered in 2020. 2020, we started a new practice, a new definition was brought, which changed from the original definition of uh, planted machinery to now planted machinery investment plus farming. This was a, quite a change from the original definition. And 2020, we 
Lithium was started with the new definition in mind. Today the registration is, is real time. So I can, I can actually check it out on my mobile at any point time. Right now the registration is 1.57 crore, which is quite obviously again a long way to go. Even if we go by a calculation of 6.3 crore on 2015, 1.57 crore is still a long way to go. But there is a very interesting thing which is coming out of it. The enterprise are expected to voluntarily declare their uh, employment level. Now we know that um, Balde Bhai will truly really support me on this, that there is a rational reluctance. Nobody likes to say, particularly very, very small, very, very tiny investors do not like to declare their number of five, six, something like that. So this is a voluntary declare. In 1.57 crore uh, population, sorry, enterprise, the voluntary declaration today is 10.2. Which basically means the people who are actually working in the city way, way ago, even the calculation which is done in 1560. That is why we, you can say, a little bit of audacity to claim that in 10 years, we should be the largest employment provider in this country. And that is the main ambition of this particular ministry and in this particular sector. Because our core area is employment provision, providing employment. And I'm quite sure the way at least our data is all suggest that in the next decade, the number of people being employed in enterprise, and when we say enterprise, quite obviously we include industries, we include services, we put all the sectors, trading and movement. We should be reaching, there's a presumption of reaching maybe around 32 crore kind of an employment level in about 10 years. There is a reason which the ministry, every ministry has prepared in the recent times. Looking at 2047, 100 years from Indian independence, looking at 47, what is it that the sector will be like? What is it that we is our ask? What is it that is our ambition? Our essential ambition is to bring MSMEs into the formal sector. All the efforts which we are doing is towards formal ambition. To ensure access to affordable credit, this is definitely one of the major ambitions. To carry technology forward, today we have there's a limited reach to technology for MSMEs who could be in park club areas, who could be in very remote areas. Our ambition is to take technology to the smallest points. Create a sustainable and globally competitive village industry sector. This is definitely one of our major targets, currently village industries. Enhance the service sector. This is going to be important. Even if we look at statistics, it is almost 60 40 now. The service sector is increasing very rapidly in this country. Capacity building, skilling, and service sector is as important as it is in the traditional industry sector. Gender parity and the better sector. We have 70 to 18 percent today, which are women owned enterprises in this country. Quite obviously, a huge ambition of this ministry in this sector is to have a gender parity, very close to the gender parity, because that is something which will again open the huge potential which exists in this particular sector and ensure access to markets and enhance the SME sector of the exports. Today it is at 45%, it is definitely one of the highest, but our ambition could be, which is very typical of developed economies, which could cost 50%, could be anything around 60 to 70 That again is a major ambition which we have. I'll come now to the declaration, the four declarations which are most important. There have been eight to nine declarations because MSME good for us, cut across measures, it cuts across sectors. So every ministry, when you pick up a budget document, you'll find that. Something has been given, some MSME inclusion is there as well. But these four are what we have identified as the most important interventions, which are declared in the budget 2024. The credit guarantees. The credit guarantees, there are two major challenges. One is over the last three to four years, the organization which we now called CJD MSME, which essentially focuses on micro and small. The, the spread is increasing from 40,000 crore per annum business. During COVID, it fell to 30 or not. Quite obviously, that was that was particular point was the team. Last year it was 60 or not. This year we'll be happy to know that it's going to reach 100. So 100,000 crore will be the guarantee crore which will be given by our trust. But this 100,000 crore also means live guarantee available is about 1 crore, 50, 1 and 1 lakh 50 crore, 50,000 crore at this point of time. That was an intention to increase this massive. We 
want our life guarantees to fit almost covered. The admission is very quick. Government in this particular budget has allowed an infusion of 9,000 crore. So, what today is a cost of about 15,000 crore, we will get a 9,000 crore infusion. This will result in two things. One is what is the life guarantee at this point in time, part 1 lakh 15,000 crore, is expected to become 3 lakh. So, there is a clear debt or two, there is a higher level of credit. Credit gap is one of our biggest challenges. The credit gap, the essence of the credit gap and the equity gap, this was the biggest challenges in the business sector, the credit. And this will add to 200,000 crore to that particular credit level. And the second thing, as the industry asks, there has been, this is the average ticket size is not very big. It is actually 8 to 9 lakhs. That is the typical ticket size. But there has been a very genuine, very genuine kind of a concern that along with the interest rate, if we are adding on the interest uh, guarantee fees, which incidentally one and a half years back was running around 2%, then they said that interest actually it is a very, very high level of interest because you are taking guarantee fee of 2%. There have been certain actions in the last two years. First, naturally, now I think your interest is chargeable only on the basis of reducing values. That is number one decision which was taken. Number two decision was taken that in certain kind of cases and certain kind of targeted groups, we reduced it massively. So today it is averaging from two, it has fallen to 1.3. This infusion will take it to 0.5. So that I think is quite a game changer as far as the concept of guarantee or from a kind of a loan is coming, it's going to be huge. So something falling to as low as 0.4, 0.5 will definitely help industries. And this highest fall is with the lowest ticket size. Naturally, there will be certain gradations, but if you look at the 0 to 5 lakhs, you would actually see a very, very low the drop will be very sad. And I'm quite sure it will be great, greatly helpful to the enterprises. The second one which I think it's a very, very important decision is to ensure the timely payment. The government has included payments made to such enterprises within the ambit of 43B of the Government Act. This is, I think, a very, very important intervention in the concept of delayed payments. Because if you do not do this payment, you are not also getting the benefits, not even taken into account for the income tax as an expenditure. This is going to, I think, it will go a long way in definitely solving the problem of the delayed payment, which is which is, has always been an issue. One specific thing which has been done in this particular budget is with related to COVID. 95% of the profited amount relating to build and performance security under Vivaats and Vishwas one only for MSMEs initiative. In case of non-executed contract during the COVID period with the return. This I, I would say is something which the industry has and something which the government has. And you give it a very, very positive one. So if this was your problem, then we are going to determine it. The fourth thing, which is in some ways far more significant than this particular three, is that the government has brought in a scheme called Vishwakarma Kosal Samba. It's called PM because in some. This is something which is going to aim the traditional artisans and crafts. A very simple, very, very simple definition of this particular scheme is it targets people who work with the hand, work with the hand with tools. We have millions of such artisans, such craftsmen, such tradesmen, people who are working with all over the country. It is not that there have not been schemes, there have been scattered schemes, there have been schemes by the state government, there have been certain kind of schemes by the central government. The essential intention here on the PMB class is to give an end-to-end -end kind of a treatment. You are talking about credit, you are talking about tooling, you are talking about skilling, you are talking about marketing, you are talking about insurance, you are talking about social security. It is going to be an end-to-end kind of a thing. A very, very ambitious skill would require huge amount of work before it actually lasts classfully. And quite obviously the support of all kinds of stakeholders. I mean, it's not just ministries, it is state governments, it is each and every community association, it is not a great school association, everything has to come together. But this is something which I think as a potential, it is another game changer. It is going to be something which is going to go way beyond what is traditional term. This is something which is going to target and to turn self employed into entrepreneur. This incidentally matches with what is the ambition of our ministry. We want people to be job givers rather than seeking jobs, that is the primary intention of this particular ministry. And 
do you feel pain makers with the help of our minister and all stakeholders? So absolutely from the grassroots level, will be success and this should be one of the biggest gifts. I'll stop here. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending. Thank you, sir, for a very informative lecture. I would uh, now request Mr. G. Savanan, director and booklet. Uh, hold on, hold on. Yes, sir. Open for discussion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now we listen to the listen to the dignitaries. Anyone is having any points to be conveyed or any, we can take some to the questions. Thanks. Uh, we are having practicing professional and also entrepreneurs. Which point is anything? I have a little point, a small point to have some clarification about this 45 day payment in this budget. Uh, this. Uh, law is introduced that if somebody doesn't pay in 45 days and then this this will be added into his income and uh, will be charged in income tax. Can you clarify this point? So what I'll do is, I'm uh, just speaking, you'll appreciate I'm not a tax. I understand. But uh, 45 days is obviously drawn from the basic fact which is introduced. I think that is a 45 days concept for up to this agency to charge you. This particular thing, if I can get you on this, I'll send the exact income tax part of it, but not the I'll do that. So then that will only help much more than sure. venturing into an area which I'm not familiar with. But one thing I know is it's going to help my client. So that, that, that is definitely going to help. I just wanted a clarification about whether this is for companies or for everything. I'll, I'll get the exact thing, I'll carry your card, and you'll get it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. This is essentially 43. That is the detailing of that. Yes. I'll take care. 43. B. So, um, sir, actually, Ministry of Corporate Affairs has released a national guideline on responsible business conduct. So, MSMEs are contributing nearly 27% of the sales of So, sir, is there any plan of by government of India to implement these principles for MSMEs that it can be a sustainable opportunity for Sustainability and such factors are definitely very, very important. That is, I mean, it is the very much part of the plan. Many of the things which we implement. Through MBA, and just the chain, the lean, and all, they have a direct relationship with the system. But if you are referring to creating I mean, kind of indicators, what is the exact word? So, BRSR, PSG, PSG, and all this component, yes, we, we have some deliveries going on in the system organization. Let us see how you are definitely working on it. It will be a pleasure to listen to Baldev Bhai's Gujarati. My second mother comes back. Oh, he can never laugh. But yet, make the most of it. So, like that, I say. This is not a problem. Lagu Mityo Bharati. हमारे देश में माइक्रो और स्मॉल इंडस्ट्रीज को सर्व करने वाली उनको रिप्रेजेंट करने वाली सबसे बड़ा संगठन है देश का हमारे देश में लगभग 700 रेवेन्यू स्टेक्स है एंड आउट ऑफ दैट ऑलमोस्ट 550 मिलियन के भारतीय का प्रतिनिधित्व है और आज संजोग से हमारे बीच में है लगभग जो भारतीय के नेशनल प्रेसिडेंट ऑल इंडिया प्रेसिडेंट श्री बलदेव भाई प्रजापति जी अंकलेश्वर से हमारे बीच में आए हुए हैं जैसा अभी आप बता रहे थे सेक्रेटरी साहब के बजट यूनियन बजट टू थ्री टू फोर में बहुत सारे इनिशिएटिव एम एस एम ई सेक्टर के लिए लिए गए हैं जो बहुत ही अच्छे हैं मैं चाहूंगा इस मौके पर बदले हुए उनके बारे में 
और जो कुछ नहीं हुआ और जो ये चाहते हैं मुस्लिम सेक्टर के बारे में उनके बारे में अपनी बात है सबको नमस्कार वैसे साहब ने अच्छी बात कभी बताई है बजट के बारे में वैसे बहुत सा वैसे एमएसएमई के लिए बजट बहुत अच्छा रहा लेकिन अभी जैसे नकपाल जी ने बोला फोर्टी फाइव डेज का जो कंफ्यूजन है एक्चुअली पहले भी फोर्टी फाइव डेज का था लेकिन वो बड़ी कंपनी छोड़ एमएसएमई कंपनी को न दे उसके लिए था अभी सब कंपनी के लिए हो गए हैं और उसमें भी वैसा एक खुश कारण आया है कि तो इनकम टैक्स में भी नहीं डेबिट कर दिया जाएगा अगले साल पेमेंट आएगा तो वो भी ना जाएगा लेकिन बहुत सी कंपनियों को कंफ्यूजन है छोटी कंपनियों को फोर्टी फाइव डेज में आता ही नहीं डॉक्टर और उसमें गवर्नमेंट का पेमेंट नहीं आता है वो मेन है उसके ऊपर ही ज्यादा वो आधार रहा होगा और एम एस एम एडमिशन ज्यादा वो नहीं फोर्टी फाइव डेज पेमेंट का है लेकिन बड़ी कंपनी से छोटी कंपनी का रहेगा तो ठीक है बाकी छोटी छोटी कभी कोई हार्डवेयर जैसी चीज लेने के लिए जाते हैं वो चीज वो महीने का एक ही बिल साफ बनाते हैं पांच चीज लेकर आते हैं महीने का एक ही बिल बने और छह महीने तक चलन चलता रहता है ऐसी बहुत सी चीजें हैं उसमें भी कंफ्यूजन है ऐसी
we have to focus more on the investor community if you have to test the lives of uh, one people. Thank you, sir. I want to thank you to our digital for uh, guiding us in conducting uh, uh, this uh, lecture series. Because we have one starting with agriculture, then sustainability, the third is summer service. If you see this series, all are very, very critical for the economy of India. Thank you, sir. I want to thank you to members from Local Productivity Council, Delhi Productivity Council, Greater Noida Productivity Council, and also the members from Lagu Ujjav Bharati for uh, interacting with the dignitaries. I am also thankful to my colleagues, members from Admin and IT Group for uh, facilitating this thing. Thank you very much.